Hi everyone, welcome back to my educational channel on biology. Let's continue with our subtopic 8.1, classification system and the naming of organisms. So this is part two, the second video for this subtopic of 8.1. And in this video, we're going to discuss the characteristics of the six kingdoms of life. So let's get started. Our learning standards are as follows. Firstly, we should be able to describe the hierarchical classification of organisms into six kingdoms. And these are 1. Archaebacteria, 2. Eubacteria, 3. Protista, 4. Fungi, 5. Plantae, and 6. Animalia. Then we should be able to describe the main features of the organisms in each of these kingdoms. Now, here's the challenge. Can you spot or locate the organisms from the six different kingdoms in this one picture? So you can try to spot the six organisms from the different kingdoms in this one picture. And also at the end of the video, we are going to discuss and find out where these organisms are that represent the six different kingdoms of life. All right. Now, for the classification of organisms, we have discussed in the previous video, the first video, that uh, all organisms in the world can be categorized into six kingdoms of life, which are as follows, Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. And the memory tip is King Papa had fun in Europe. King stands for Kingdom, Papa stands for Plantae, Animalia, Protista, Archaebacteria, and then Fun is for Fungi, and U is for bacteria. So these are all the names of the six kingdoms of life on earth. Right. And we have also looked at this picture that shows organisms in each of the six kingdoms of life. We have also discussed the definition of the terms prokaryote and eukaryote, autotroph and heterotroph, unicellular and multicellular. I think the most, uh, the hardest or the one that we tend to forget is prokaryote and eukaryote. So let me just read through again this part. A prokaryote is a type of cell which does not have a membrane-bound nucleus and membrane-enclosed organelles like mitochondrion and uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this type of cell has its DNA exposed like that without an nuclear membrane surrounding it. So we cannot call this part of the cell a nucleus because it does not have a nuclear membrane that encloses the DNA. All right. Uh, so this for this uh, type of cell, which is the bacterial cell, that is a prokaryote, the DNA is just uh, floating in the cytoplasm in a space called the nucleot. Right. Now for eukaryotes, they have each eukaryote or each eukaryotic cell has a nucleus enclosed in a nuclear membrane. So this is called the true nucleus, all right? And it encloses the DNA, which is in the chromosomes, in the nucleus. The membrane encloses the DNA or the chromosomes in the nucleus. Also, this type of cell, the eukaryotic cell, has membrane enclosed organelles. Can you name some of the membrane enclosed organelles? Yes, mitochondrion, lysosome, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi, Golgi apparatus, right? And then for autotroph, we can understand that it is an organism that can synthesize its own food from simple inorganic substances by using light energy, as, and this occurs in plants that carry out photosynthesis to produce their own food substances or chemical energy. By using chemical energy through a process called chemosynthesis, this occurs in some types of bacteria, right? And heterotrophs are organisms that cannot synthesize their own food, but obtain the food molecules or nutrients by eating other organisms. And um, examples are the animals and the uh, fungi and bacteria too, right? The first kingdom we are going to study is Kingdom Archaebacteria. 
or sometimes called primitive bacteria and ancient bacteria. So they seem to have a special ability or sort of superpower of being able to live and thrive in very extreme conditions. Examples are sulfur lobus species or sulfur oxidizing bacteria that live in acidic conditions of pH 2 to 3 and at high temperatures, about 80 degrees Celsius, in the hot springs. Another type is called Halobacterium salinarium that live in places with high salt concentration, such as in the Dead Sea. Let's find out more. Right, let's study the first kingdom, Kingdom Archaebacteria. The word Archae here means ancient, as in archaeologists. An archaeologist is a person who digs up the ruins of uh, buildings, old buildings, and also find old items to analyze and to study about the people who lived in the past. Okay, So when we say archaebacteria, we are actually saying ancient bacteria, because this bacteria probably lived longer, existed longer than the other types of organisms. So they are also called primitive bacteria because their cell structure is the cellular structure is simpler than that of, say, a human cell. They don't have organelles, membrane-bound organelles like mitochondrion and endoplasmic reticulum. So the type of cell is a, they are prokaryotes, right? Or if we are using as an adjective, we say prokaryotic cells or prokaryotic organisms, all right? So the word prokaryote means it's a noun. Eh? So archaebacteria are prokaryotes or they have prokaryotic cells. Now, what does that mean? Let's go down to this part here. The cell does not have a membrane-bound nucleus. It doesn't have a nuclear membrane to bound to enclose the nucleus. And also doesn't have other membrane-bound organelles, like as I said, mitochondrion, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and lysosomes. All these are not present in the prokaryote. Okay? Then, in terms of nutrition, in terms of number of cells, they are unicellular organisms. That means they are single cell organisms. Like all these uh, cells here, the rod shaped cells here, yes, they are single cell organisms, right? Now, nutrition, they can either be heterotrophs or autotrophs. So, uh, they can either obtain their food molecules or nutrients from other organisms or they can produce them through processes like uh, chemosynthesis, say, right? Now, characteristics or the structure of the cell. The cell walls have no peptidoglycan. So this compound, uh, peptidoglycan, is made up of sugars and uh, amino acids. But they don't have this compound. This compound called peptidoglycan is only found in the eel bacteria. Okay, for archaebacteria, the cell walls have no peptidoglycan. That's how we differentiate them from eubacteria, which have peptidoglycan in the cell walls. Then the cell, as a prokaryotic cell, it does not have a membrane-bound nucleus. It doesn't have a, a nuclear membrane and other membrane-bound organelles like mitochondrion and lysosome and Golgi apparatus and so forth. Habitat. It tends to live in very extreme conditions, such as in very hot, acidic, salty or anaerobic environments. Now this word anaerobic means lack, an environment that lacks oxygen. All right? So they don't uh, rely on oxygen for respiration like most organisms because they survive better in the condition that has a lack of oxygen. Classification can be divided into three groups based on the habitats. Methanogens are methane producers. That means these type of archaea bacteria produce methane from their metabolic processes and they live in anaerobic conditions where there's a lack of oxygen, such as in the swamps uh, or the paya, okay? Malay, we call it paya. Cow's digestive tract and also human digestive tract. So we actually have archaea bacteria living in our digestive tract, such as in the mouth and so forth. Halophiles. Halophile, the word halo means salt. So halophiles are salt lovers. The word foul means lover. So some uh, to love something so salt lovers they are found in areas with extremely high salt concentration like the dead sea thermophiles thermo means heat so these are heat lovers these are bacteria that can withstand high temperatures such as in the hot springs so 
examples are, I must know these two examples, huh? because they are mentioned in the textbook. Sulfolobus species, which is sulfur oxidizing bacteria. They look like crushed donuts. So the shape is a bit uh, different from the normal type of bacteria. Then another one that lives in the salty areas are the Halobacterium salinarum, right? So uh, the word halo is here meaning it lives in the salt, salty conditions. Okay, so this is these are all the cells uh, of uh, the bacteria, the archaebacteria. Now let's look at the structure of archaebacteria. So this is a cell of an archaebacteria. It is quite like the eubacteria, all right? All the structures you see here that are found in archaebacteria are also found in eubacteria. Now, let's look at the three layers, three outer layers. So the bacteria has an outer covering called the capsule, which is a slimy la layer to protect the cell wall. Okay? And then the second layer is the cell wall, which is not made from made of peptidoglycan, remember that, huh? no peptidoglycan in the cell wall. And then uh, the third layer is the plasma membrane that's also found in eukaryotic cells. Now inside is the cytoplasm and there are ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So a ribosome is not a membrane-bound organelle. So it can be found in the archaebacteria. Okay? Uh, but the DNA is not surrounded by the nuclear any nuclear membrane so that's why uh, there is no true nucleus here dna just floats in a space called a nucleot right dna in nucleot and some of these archaea bacteria may have flagellum or of more than one flagella to help them move around when the flagellum moves so they can maybe swim in the environments and by using this flagellum, okay, waving, uh, swishing the flagellum back and forth. So some bacteria also have hair-like structures here, which are called uh, pili, but we don't really have to label that because it's not labeled in the textbook, right? Uh, so you must be able to draw the archaea bacteria, as seen here. Now, just now I mentioned that there are three groups of archaea bacteria which are classified based on the habitat or environment that they live in. So the environments are extreme environments with extreme conditions. Now the three groups of archaea bacteria are methanogens or methane producers, thermophiles or heat lovers, and halophiles or salt lovers. So let's dive into the discussion of these three types of archaea bacteria in more detail. The notes here are the same as those in the following slides. So we'll dive straight into the topic. So group one of archaea bacteria, which are classified based on their habitats. These are the methanogens or methane producers. They produce methane in the process of their metabolic reactions that they carry out. So methanogens are obligate anaerobic bacteria. Obligate here means that they must have this condition of a lack of oxygen in order to survive, all right? So they live only in conditions where there is a lack of oxygen, where there is an anaerobic condition. Now, they produce methane as a metabolic byproduct. And this is a gas with the formula CH4, right? So where are they found? They are found in the swamps, which are areas that are flooded with water, and they're also in the digestive tract of ruminants, such as cows, and also in the digestive tract of humans. Okay, So if you look at the digestive system of the cow, it has a very large four-chambered stomach. And this is where the methanogens are found, in the stomach. right? So in the process of the metabolic reactions or metabolism, they will produce methane. That's why the cow gives off a lot of methane gas when they fat okay when they conclude uh, the fat now for humans the digestive tract or digestive uh, system also has a lot has some uh, methanogens okay that 
live in the mouth. These mutagens can cause gum disease and other conditions. Huh? They are not uh, all harmless. And also in the stomach and in the intestines, like in the large intestines. All right. The second group of archaea bacteria are the thermophiles. Thermo is related to heat. Foul means loving. So thermophiles are bacteria which are heat lovers. They are from the kingdom archaea bacteria. So this type of bacteria can withstand high temperatures and they flourish and grow well at optimum temperatures of 60 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. So at this temperature, other organisms cannot survive for long. Right? But these archaea bacteria can survive. They are found in hot springs and highly acidic locations with pH of about 2 to 3. In places like Yellowstone National Park in the US, as seen here. So this, this is one of the largest hot springs. Right? It's the largest hot spring in the US. And it has colors of red, yellow, green and blue that are caused by these bacteria which are thermophiles. Now, examples of a thermophile is sulfolobus species, sulfur oxidizing bacteria. So this type of bacteria is found where sulfur is present, right? And also where the temperature is high and the location is acidic. So they are thermophiles. Now this example of sulfolobus species, as I said, it looks like some squash donuts, right? So it's found in the hot springs. For example, in the Yellowstone National Park, right? And it can withstand very high temperatures. The third group of archaea bacteria are the halophiles, which are the salt lovers. The word halo has to do with salt. So halophiles are found in places with extremely high salt concentration, such as the Dead Sea. Do you know why the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea? It's because not Think much can survive in the Dead Sea. There are no fishes living in the Dead Sea because any organism that's placed into the Dead Sea will experience osmosis. Water will diffuse out from the cells of the organism through osmosis and the organism will suffer from dehydration and die. Okay? But halophiles are able to tolerate uh, such places with extremely high salt concentration and they can also grow and survive there. So one example is Halobacterium salinarium. The word halo here will give an idea of what type of uh, archaea bacteria this is. It's a halophile. Okay? So there we have it, the three groups of uh, archaea bacteria that seem to have the superpowers or ability to thrive, survive and thrive in extreme conditions. We have the halophiles, the thermophiles and the methanogens. Next, we come to kingdom eel bacteria. Now, here we see the different types of bacteria in this kingdom. Some are spiral shaped, some are shaped like a uh, sphere. So, these are called the coccus. Huh? The shape is called the coccus shape, and this is spirillum. And then uh, some are rod shaped. So, this type of uh, bacteria are called uh, bacillus. Okay, we will come to that later in another topic too when we talk about microorganisms. Now this type of bacteria is the Vibrio cholerae. That means they are shaped like a comma. And this Vibrio cholerae has flagellum also to allow it uh, to enable it to move. So Vibrio stands for the shape, right? It's shaped like a comma, so it's called Vibrio. Cholerae is the disease. It causes cholera. So it's a very dangerous bacteria that can cause disease. Salmonella is another type of bacteria, Salmonella species that can cause uh, food poisoning, right? The second kingdom that we're going to discuss is kingdom eel bacteria. The word eel here means true, true bacteria, as compared to archaea bacteria, right? Which is called the primitive bacteria. Now, type of cell. So, organisms in the kingdom eel bacteria, they are also prokaryotes or their cells are prokaryotic cells, right? That means that, again, the cell does not have a membrane-bound nucleus, okay? The cytoplasm 
may contain ribosomes and plasmids. It has all these organelles or structures that are not membrane bound. Okay, it does not have any membrane enclosed organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and others. So this means that it is a prokaryote. Now, number of cells. It is a unicellular organism. So bacteria in the kingdom eubacteria, they are unicellular, right? But they can form colonies like this, where the coccus, uh, the cells that are in the form of a coccus or spherical in shape, they are sort of uh, grouped together to form a chain, linked together to form a chain. So that's why the term is streptococcus. All right, strepto means a chain-like structure here. Right, so nutrition can either be heterotroph or autotroph. Now, so if they are heterotroph, yeah, heterotrophic, uh, that means that they obtain their food molecules or nutrients from other organisms. For example, some of the bacteria may be parasites that cause disease and they live on the living host to obtain nutrients. Or they can be saprophytes that break down the dead organic matter into simpler substances, all right? And um, another type of nutrition is autotroph where they can get, some of them can carry out either photosynthesis or chemosynthesis to produce their own food substances, right? Now, characteristics or structure of the cell. The cell walls of the eubacteria are made up of peptidoglycan or murine, which is a pro polymer made up of sugars and amino acids. Okay, so the sugar part is the gly part, huh? okay, glycan. Huh? So then peptido comes from the word peptide. A peptide is a chain consisting of amino acids. Okay, so this word peptidoglycan tells us that this compound is made up of sugars and amino acids. So uh, for eubacteria, bacteria, the cell walls are made up of peptidoglycan, but for archaea bacteria, the cell walls are not made up of peptidoglycan. That is the main difference. Now, the cell does not have a membrane-bound nucleus, as mentioned just now, and it contains ribosomes and plasmids. Plasmids are circular DNA, but has no membrane-enclosed organelles. Okay? Ribosome is not membrane-enclosed. Plasmid also not membrane-enclosed. Huh? So there are no membrane-enclosed organelles in the mito like the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and others. Classification. How do we classify eubacteria? They are classified according to their shape. So there are different shapes. Huh? They have different shapes. For example, some are rounded or spherical in shape. So we use the term coccus or coxi to uh, describe them. Vibrio. Now, as you can see here, vibrio choleric. The shape of the bacteria is like a comma. Okay, and then bacillus is the rod-shaped bacteria. Spirulum, they are spiral-shaped bacteria. And so here we see streptococcus pneumoniae. When the coccus are linked together, form a chain, then we call them streptococcus. So the first term here tells us the shape of the bacteria. And the second term here is mentioning the disease that it causes, which is pneumonia. Huh? So the examples for eubacteria are streptococcus pneumoniae, which causes pneumonia, and vibrio cholerae causes what? Yes, cholera. Huh? So the first term tells us the shape of the bacteria, and the second term is the disease. Not always the case, but in these two cases, yes. Okay. Now let's test ourselves. In the textbook, cyanobacteria is mentioned. So is cyanobacteria or blue-green algae classified as a type of bacteria or algae? Right? Because it's called cyanobacteria and then it's also called sometimes called blue-green algae. Now characteristics of the cyanobacteria. It's autotrophic, contains chlorophyll for photosynthesis, has no membrane-bound nucleus or organelles, and peptidoglycan is present in the cell wall. So is it a bacteria or an algae? Take a moment to think about this and pause the video, right? Then we'll discuss. Now here we see one example of cyanobacteria. 
Prochlorococcus species is an important marine cyanobacterium which produces much of the world's oxygen. All right? So cyanobacteria are important in that they can be the producers for the marine ecosystem in this case. Okay, let's think about the classification for cyanobacteria. All right? Its autotrophic contains chlorophyll for photosynthesis. But look at the third one. No membrane-bound nucleus or organelles. So is it a prokaryote or eukaryote? Yes, it is a prokaryote. And as a prokaryote, cyanobacteria lacks the membrane-bound nucleus and lacks mitochondria and chloroplasts, right? The chlorophyll is not inside the chloroplast. Okay? It's in the cell, but not in the chloroplast. So it's a prokaryote. Whereas algae are all eukaryotes. Algae are all eukaryotes because they have a membrane-bound nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Furthermore, peptidoglycan is present in the cell wall as with the members of uh, as for the members of uh, eubacteria, kingdom eubacteria. Okay? So the answer is cyanobacteria is a type of bacteria, not algae, as it is a prokaryote without a true nucleus or nuclear membrane. It is classified as a type of bacteria nowadays. It is not an algae, as all algae are eukaryotes that have the nuclear membrane. So like bacteria some more, it is its cell will also contains peptidoglycan. Okay? So the answer is that it is a type of bacteria. Now let's look at the structure of eubacteria. So its outer appearance may look somewhat like archaea bacteria. In this case, you can see the an example of a bacteria or eubacteria that has um, a rod shaped, rod shaped structure, rod shape, and it has a hairs on the surface, right? And then one flagellum. So this is just an example. Huh? Some bacteria have more than one flagellum, some have, some have none, okay? And some may be shaped may be rounded in shape and so forth, okay, or shaped like a comma. Now, let's look at the internal structure. So again, we have three layers, a capsule, cell wall, and plasma membrane in this order. And then we have the cytoplasm inside, we have uh, ribosomes, right? You have the DNA, just like for archaea bacteria, that floats in the cytoplasm, and there's no membrane, nuclear membrane surrounding it. So this area is called the nucleoid, and it contains the DNA that is exposed like that. Then, plasmid is a small circular DNA strand in bacteria. All right? It looks like a rubber band, right? It looks like a rubber band huh, inside the cell. So this is a plasmid. It also contains DNA, apart from the DNA that floats inside here. All right? So the question that's raised is, what actually is the difference between archaeobacteria and eubacteria? First, we start with the similarities. So you may be asked to make a comparison. Huh? Now, both archaeobacteria and eubacteria are unicellular organisms. All of them are unicellular, having only one cell. They are both prokaryotes. So the cells do not have a membrane-bound nucleus or membrane-enclosed organelles. And both of them reproduce by binary fission, where one cell divides and forms two cells. Now let's look at the differences. So differences between archaeobacteria and eubacteria. Cell wall. Archaeobacteria has no peptidoglycan in the cell wall. But eubacteria, for eubacteria, the cell wall is made of peptidoglycan or murine, murine, a polymer made up of sugars and amino acids. Habitat. Archaeobacteria live in very hot, salty, acidic or anaerobic environments. They have no oxygen. So they live in extreme environments, like for example in hot springs and swamps. Eel bacteria, they can be found in all environments on earth, whether in the soil, air, bodies of organisms. In fact, some of them are also found in the hot springs, like the cyanobacteria. Certain types of cyanobacteria can also tolerate, tolerate the high temperatures. All right? They are found in all environments. Now, examples for archaeobacteria are sulfur lobus species, the sulfur oxidizing bacteria, and Helobacterium salinarium. For eubacteria, you can give examples such as Streptococcus pneumoniae and Vibrio, Vibrio cholerae. Description. Archaeobacteria are called the primitive bacteria, whereas the eubacteria are the true bacteria.
Now the third kingdom is Kingdom Protista. So Kingdom Protista consists of three types of organisms, the protozoa, algae, and slime molds. We will only discuss protozoa and algae, the structures of protozoa and algae. In fact, we already discussed the structures of, now what's this organism here? Paramecium, and this one? Amoeba species, right? We'll discuss their structures in uh, form 4. Huh? So protozoa are single cell, animal-like organisms, but they are not animals. They are not classified as being in the kingdom Animalia. Huh? They are in kingdom Protista because they are more simple in structure. Now, algae. Algae consists of unicellular algae and multicellular algae. So the name for this unicellular algae is Clamidomonas, right? And it is special because uh, it's an algae that has a U-shaped uh, chloroplast and it can carry out photosynthesis. All algae can carry out photosynthesis. They have uh, chlorophyll in them, all right? And then these multicellular algae are the marine algae that are very big in size and they live in the sea. So they are called sometimes called seaweeds. So their structures, these structures look like sea, like the, the leaves, huh? they look like leaves, but actually they are not leaves. They are not so complex as the leaves of plants. So these structures are called the talus. Let's discuss more about this kingdom. So kingdom protista, the type of cell is eukaryotic. So they are eukaryotes. Uh, so here there's a difference already between the uh, bacteria and the protista. Okay, we'll come to that in a while. Number of cells, either unicellular, for example, Chlamydomonas, Euglena here, and also Paramecium. They're all unicellular. Or multicellular, such as the seaweeds or the marine algae. Nutrition can either be heterotrophs or autotrophs or both. For example, algae are all autotrophs. And then uh, Paramecium, Amoeba, and Amoeba are heterotrophs. Okay, they can eat bacteria, and other uh, rotting, decomposing substances in the pond, all right? They are floating in the pond. Now, what is this organism? Euglena, right? So, Euglena is very special because it has chloroplast. So, it can carry out photosynthesis, although it's a, although it's a protozoa. Classification. Protists are divided into three groups. Protozoa, such as Euglena species, Amoeba species, Paramecium species, Algae, such as Chlamydomona species and Spirogyro species. They have chloroplasts, all of them have chloroplasts. And then slime mold called a Physerum polycephalum. Okay. Cell organization, it has a simple cell organization with no specialized tissue, unlike animals. Structure, the cell contains a nucleus that is bound by a nuclear membrane and other membrane-bound organelles. That's why it's called a eukaryote because it has a true nucleus which is bounded by a nuclear membrane and other organelles are also the membrane bound organelles are also present such as mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum examples chlamydomonas spirogyra and amoeba so let's have a look at uh, the structures of these cells more closely so for the kingdom protista, let's discuss the structure of protozoa first of all, and then after that, the structure of algae, right? So what is this organism that's shown here? Yes, this is Euglena species. Now, we already discussed Paramecium species in Form 4, right? The structure of Paramecium species. And very briefly, we know that Paramecium species has a macronucleus and a micronucleus. Its nuclei are membrane bound. It has nuclear membrane. So it is an eukaryotic cell, right? Not a prokaryotic cell. Then it has food vacuoles, contractile vacuoles, and so forth. So all these are membrane bound organelles. So this cell is actually an eukaryotic cell, or paramecium is an eukaryote. Okay? And the structures are more. The structure of the cell is more advanced than that of the bacterial cell, right? Uh, so too with euglena. Now, the structure of euglena is going to be discussed, although it is not discussed in the Form 5 uh, textbook. Huh? 
but it's good to know a bit more so for interest sake and also for hot questions. So euglena is shaped like a spindle, eh? right? It's brought in the center here. And it has a long flagellum to help it move around. A photoreceptor is to detect the light because it needs to carry out photosynthesis. So the euglena will always swim towards the light, where the, the, to the direction of the light, right? So it has chloroplast, so it's a very unique protozoa because it can also carry out photosynthesis, unlike uh, other protozoa that cannot carry out photosynthesis, right? So uh, it has a contractile vacuum, flower shape, uh, just like for paramecium, to help uh, in osmoregulation to pump out the excess water from the cell, right? Because euglena lives in a freshwater environment. So water is always diffusing into the cell by osmosis, right? So the contractile vacuum helps to pump out the excess water. Now, inside there are also membrane and closed organelles such as the Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondrion, and the chloroplast. So this is an eukaryotic cell. Also, it has a nucleus that is bound by, the, by a nuclear membrane, okay, as seen here. So the first cell here is Chlamydomonas species. It has two flagella to help it to move in the aquatic environment. And these two structures are the vacuoles to help it carry out osmoregulation, eh, to pump out excess water. Then it has a cell wall and a plasma membrane, nucleus in the center here, uh, floating in the cytoplasm here, and then the U-shaped chloroplast, so it can uh, carry out photosynthesis. It is an autotroph. Now, for spirogyra, let's look at the parts. So, uh, the spirogyra consists of cells that are linked together. But it's actually... Uh, so, this is just like one cell here, spirogyra cell. It has a uh, mucilage, which is a slimy substance to protect the cell wall. And then inside the green... Cell wall is the green part, eh? and then... The black part, the inner part here, after the green green line, this represents the plasma membrane. Then the yellow part here is the cytoplasm. And then it has a spiral shape, spiral shape, uh, uh, chloroplast. Okay, so it can carry out photosynthesis. Then in the center here, surrounded by uh, cytoplasm, uh, this is still the cytoplasm, the blue part. So in the center here is the nucleus okay and the vacuole are all these white parts here all right so other than unicellular algae we have multicellular algae in the kingdom protista for example fucus species which is a type of marine algae so it consists of a plant-like body but it's not a plant all right so this part of the algae is called the talus and it branches out to form the fronds uh, or leaf-like structures here, all right? But this talus is a plant-like vegetative body of algae that lacks differentiation into stem, leaves and roots. So algae do not have stem, leaves and roots, all right? Just a simple uh, vegetative body called the talus, all right? And it also has air bladders to keep it afloat in the sea. So algae are simpler in structure compared to plants. So they are not grouped together with plants. They are in the grouped in the kingdom protista, classified as uh, members of kingdom protista, even though they are multicellular and they can grow to quite large sizes, right? So these are some other types of seaweeds, which are actually algae. There's green algae, red algae, and brown algae. Do you know that a special type of seaweed, which we call nori, is uh, dried and then made into an edible uh, seaweed that is used to wrap sushi, right? Many of us like to eat sushi, eh? a part of the Japanese cuisine. So it is made from a species of red algae, this seaweed here that we eat, that we wrap the sushi with, right? It is made from... Uh, Red algae, actually. 
So algae can be edible, especially the seaweeds. It's gone to kingdom fungi. Can you identify the cells here? The first one is yeast, right? Buddy. And then we have uh, this one, which is the, it can be the bread mold, right? That grows on bread. And uh, this one is, of course, a type of mushroom. Now, what are the characteristics of fungi? Type of cell. They are all eukaryotes or eukaryotic organisms because they have the membrane-bound nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. So they are more advanced and more complex than bacteria. Number of cells, either unicellular or multicellular. For example, yeast is unicellular. It's a unicellular organism, but mucor species and agarical species, the a type of mushroom, are multicellular organisms. Nutrition, all are heterotrophs because they do not contain chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis. So they prefer the places that do not have sunlight, and these are the dark and moist places. Structure, their cell walls are made of chitin, a tough polysaccharide. Okay, so this is a, an important characteristic of fungi. Cell wall, again, I can see here, the outer cell wall here has chitin in it. Okay, the brown layer. And chitin is a tough polysaccharide that's also found in insects. In the, the external surface uh, or in the exoskeleton of insects. The body is made up of a thread-like network of hyphae called mycelium. For example, let's look at mucor species. The long thread-like fine structures here that looks like filaments, uh, they're actually hyphae. And when you have a group of hyphae, we call it mycelium. Okay, now examples. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is yeast. So this name has to be remembered. Huh? It's actually the scientific name for yeast. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Okay. Uh, one type of mushroom is called agaricus species. And uh, mucor species is another example of a fungi. It's actually the bread mold that grows on bread that is uh, ex that has expired. Huh? This. And uh, them bread uh, that's been left for a few days will have this uh, fungi uh, with different types of uh, mucor species growing on it. Let's look at the structure of a yeast cell. The scientific name for yeast is Saccharomyces seri, cerevisiae. Now, this is a yeast cell. It has a chitin cell wall, a cell wall made from chitin, made of chitin, and then the second layer is the plasma membrane. Inside the cell, you have the cytoplasm. And they can find the nucleus floating in the cytoplasm. And then you have glycogen, which is the food store. So the food store for yeast is not in the form of starch, but glycogen. And then it has a vacuum to store certain substances inside. Then yeast reproduces by budding. Huh? So first it will grow the bud, and then the bud will separate from the main cell from the mother cell so here is a picture of yeast budding all right and these parts are the buds let's look at another organism from kingdom fungi this is mucor species which is a bread mold right so uh, you can see here that it consists of the hyphae or mycelium and this Root-like structures are rhizoids. So rhizoids are hyphae that grow downwards to anchor the fungus to the substrate. And these rhizoids can release enzymes to digest the dead organic matter, such as the bread, and then absorb the simple products, such as glucose. Right. So here we see the part that uh, is used in reproduction. This is called the sporangio. sporangio Four, this is the stalk, right? Sporangio 4 is the stalk. And then the round shaped structure here that contains the spore is called the sporangium. So a sporangium is like a fruiting body, all right? But it's not actually a fruit, but it's called the part that uh, is involved in reproduction, right? So 
Inside the sporangium, the spores are formed, and when it matures, the sporangium will burst open and release the spores into the air. And the spores will be carried by the wind to other parts of the environment. So here we can see the black structures here. These are the sporangium. Or these ones are the sporangia, sporangium, and they can, uh, when they, they grow dark like this, some of them, they are already ripe, so-called ripe, and they will burst and release the spores. Okay. So here's another type of multicellular fungi, the mushrooms. At least know the name of one species, for example, agaricus species that's mentioned in the textbook. So uh, we have the edible mushrooms and the poisonous ones too. This one may, may be a poisonous mushroom, do not know. Okay. And uh, the edible mushrooms are, for example, inoki, which we sometimes cook with noodles. Shiitake mushroom is supposed to be anti-cancer. And we have oyster mushrooms that are also fried with vegetables. So mushrooms are saprophytes in that they break down the dead organic matter in their environment. Let's go on to a more advanced uh, organism that is found in kingdom planting. All right, so plants are considered to be much more complex and advanced compared to fungi and algae. So, what are the characteristics of organisms in kingdom planting? First, the type of cell. They are eukaryotic organisms. Number of cells, they are multicellular. Nutrition, they are photoautotrophs because they can synthesize their own food via photosynthesis as they have chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. So, what is an exception that is not a plant that is not a photoautotroph? Yes, Rafflesia species is a parasite. It is a plant but it has no leaves and it cannot carry out photosynthesis. Instead, it absorbs the food substances from the host tree. Okay, so it's a parasitic plant. Now, characteristic. Plants can undergo sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, the male gamete will fertilize with the female gamete in the flower, right? And for asexual reproduction, a plant like grass uh, can reproduce through vegetative uh, methods, for example, uh, when the roots or the stem grow underground and then produce new new plants. All right. So asexual reproduction is through uh, tubers or underground uh, stems and so forth. Examples, seedless plants such as the ferns here and plants with seeds produce the flowers and they're called the flowering plants, for example, uh, hibiscus species and uh, bougainvillea. All right. Lastly, we come to Kingdom Animalia, which is the sixth kingdom. Kingdom Animalia consists of organisms that are more advanced, the most advanced of all the kingdoms. Right. So they have uh, cells that are more advanced in structure. And also, the cells are organized to form tissues and uh, organs and systems. All right. So, let's have a look at the characteristics of uh, kingdom animalia. Now, type of cell, yeah, eukaryotic organisms or eukaryotes. Number of cells, they are multicellular organisms. And nutrition, they are heterotrophs because they cannot synthesize their own food but obtain the nutrients from other organisms. Characteristics, most animals can move and most animals can reproduce sexually, right? Where, there, where two parents are involved, 
and there is fertilization of the male gamete, uh, fertilization of the female gamete by the male gamete. Examples are the invertebrates such as the starfish here, Asteria species, and vertebrates such as the elephant. Scientific name is Elephas maximus, right? And then uh, we also have other vertebrates like the Pantera leo here, shown here, which is the lion, right? And this is called a Taucan, but we do not need to know the scientific name. Okay? So, do you need to remember all these scientific names? Well, for the ones shown in the books, it's better to remember examples that are given in the books. Okay? Now, Pantera Leo is quite uh, well known also. And Phyllis Catus is also mentioned in the question section uh, in your textbook. Okay? So, you can use these as examples. Phyllis Catus. Phyllis Catus, Asteria species, and Elephas maximus. So this is the summary of the different kingdoms and their characteristics. All right. So do we have to remember this? Yes, this is a basic uh, summary of the different kingdoms which I've discussed just now. So let's go through it very quickly. Archaebacteria, number of cells, unicellular. Structure, they are of cell wall, it has no peptidoglycan, right? Presence of chlorophyll, chlorophyll is absent. It doesn't have a true nucleus. And examples are Hel Helobacterium salinarum. Eubacteria, they are unicellular, like Archaebacteria. And their cell wall contains peptidoglycan, compared to Archaebacteria that do not have peptidoglycan. Some bacteria have chlorophyll and can carry out photosynthesis. No nucleus present because they do not have the nuclear membrane. All right, so archaebacteria is the same also. No nuclear membrane, so there's no true nucleus. Examples are lactobacillus species, or you can think of vibrio choleric. Protista, they can be unicellular or multicellular. Right, for example, protozoa are unicellular, but some algae are multicellular. Structure of cell wall. Protozoa do not have cell wall, okay? But the cell wall exists for algae. And the cell wall contains cellulose, some cellulose. Some protozoa have chlorophyll, such as euglena. All algae contain chlorophyll, so they can carry out photosynthesis. But they do not have roots, stem, and leaves, as in plants. So the true nucleus is present because they are eukaryotes. So examples are paramecium species, which are unicellular. Now, Fucus species, this is an algae that lives in the sea, all right? It's a marine algae, it is a seaweed, and it is multicellular. Fungi can be both unicellular and multicellular. Structure of cell wall, so this is special, they have chitin in the cell walls. No chlorophyll present, so they cannot carry out photosynthesis. Nucleus is present because they are eukaryotic cells. Examples are Securo. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is the yeast, and agaricus species, which is the mush a type of mushroom. Plantae are multicellular. Now, the cell wall contains cellulose, so quite similar to algae. They contain, the cells contain chlorophyll, so they can carry out photosynthesis, like algae. And they have roots, stem, and leaves, so they're... Uh, Cells are more organized, all right, and they are more complex. They form roots, stem, and leaves. Their tissues are more complex compared to algae. Presence of nucleus, yes, because they are eukaryotic cells. Bougainvillea species, uh, which is a bunga kertas. Animalia are multicellular. No cell wall present, all right, no chlorophyll present. So they are heterotrophs, they cannot carry out photosynthesis. Uh, they have the true nucleus present, okay, because they have nucleus and the nuclear membrane that surrounds the nucleoplasm. Example of an organism is Elephas maximus, which is the elephant, or you can think of Phyllis catus. Back to this picture, can you spot and locate the organisms from the six different kingdoms 
in this one picture. You can pause the video for a while and try to find the six organisms. Right, let's get the answer. The answer. So there are six kingdoms shown here: Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Now, for Archaebacteria, it is found in the digestive system of the girl, right? In the mouth, stomach, and the intestines, as like the large intestine, okay? And then for Eubacteria, number two, Eubacteria, is found on the skin and also in the body of the girl, right? It's found in the soil, bacteria is found in the soil, and also in the pond water. Thirdly, protista. Protista, such as the protozoa and algae, are found in the pond water. It is amoeba and paramecium. And also in the green phytoplankton that floats on the water surface. Okay, that's Chlamydomonas and that's Spirogyra. Next, Kingdom Fungi. Okay, look at number three again. Here we have the algae growing on the tree trunk. Okay, these are unicellular algae called Pleurococcus that can grow on tree trunks during the rainy weather. For number four fungi, we can see a few mushrooms here. So these belong to kingdom fungi. And for plantae, it's very easy. The trees and the bushes belong to kingdom plantae. And lastly, animalia. Very easy. Okay, the tortoise and birds and even the dragonfly are all from kingdom animal. So there you have it, all the six organisms or six different kingdoms are rep represented in this picture. Let's test ourselves to find out whether we've understood this lesson. Now, which of the following structures are not found in Archaebacteria and Eubacteria? Right, you can pause the video and try the two questions first and we will discuss it in a short while. Okay, so let's begin. Now, which of the following structures are not found in both Archaebacteria and Eubacteria? So we know that Archaebacteria and Eubacteria are prokaryotes. They do not have a membrane-bound nucleus and they do not have membrane-bound organelles, right? So uh, both these organisms do have plasma membrane, they have cell wall and they have ribosomes. The ribosome is not a membrane-bound organelle. It is found in both Archaebacteria and Eubacteria. But mitochondria are membrane-bound organelles. So they are not present in these two types of organisms, Archaebacteria and Eubacteria. Answer is D. Now next, an organism X has the following characteristics. Multicellular eukaryote autotroph. Which of the following species could be X? So here are some scientific names of organisms and we are expected to know them as they have been mentioned in the textbook. Right? So know some of these scientific names as is found in the textbook. So Elephas maximus is the elephant. It is multicellular eukaryote but not an autotroph. It is a heterotroph that has to get its organic food substances from other organisms Okay, by eating other organisms. It has to get its food substances from other organisms. So answer is not A. Chlamydomonas is unicellular, not multicellular. It's a unicellular algae, although it is an autotroph that can uh, produce its own organic food substances through photosynthesis, but then it's unicellular. So B is out. Fucus species is the brown algae, the multicellular algae. It is multicellular. It is an eukaryote. It has a membrane bound nucleus all right because it belongs to kingdom protista and it is an autotroph it has chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis okay in the c so the answer is c now iglina species is not multicellular it's a unicellular organism a type of protozoa right so answer is c 